Hello, I'm Jeffrey Boone. Thank you very much, Jazz and uh, Griffin Art Projects for asking me to do this. Um, you asked me specifically about how I started collecting, and it was when I was um, in the fine arts program at Memorial University back in the late 80s, where I spent most of my time in the studios of my artist friends and um, really just super curious about what they were doing and started to acquire their work, usually just through being given things, projects that they had worked on in the past, uh, I guess, 20 years or so. It's become more of a serious interest. And I'm going to show you a few things that we live with every day and tell you a bit about why we enjoy them, where they came from. So the first artist that I wanted to point out is uh, Mohamed Saeed Balbaki, who is a Lebanese artist from Beirut, but has been based in Berlin for the past oh, 15 or 20 years, perhaps. Um, he works in painting, drawing, printmaking. He also collects, uh, and his work often has... Uh, a, a theme that grounds it. It's about displacement, having grown up in uh, Beirut during the um, Civil War. He, his family, plus many people that he knew, would be uh, you know, displaced from their homes due to the war. It's about wanting, I guess, wanting to find your place, your loss of place, and this is something that I really enjoy living with at this time because we're all displaced because of COVID-19. We're all displaced from our normal way of living. We're happily not displaced from our homes. This next piece is by Niep, Nancy Saunders, who is a Montreal-based Inuit artist. In this work, which was produced for a show at Marion Scott Gallery here in Vancouver uh, last fall, shows um, very remote landscape from northern Quebec. And the photographs were done, done by Robert Frigette. She acquired the photographs and then painted over them in these very intense neon colors. And as she says, she's reclaiming the land through this very expressionistic painting. This is another Nancy Saunders. This one was produced in the Marion Scott Gallery as a performance. Again, it's a Robert Frigette photograph that she has painted on. It was uh, one of a series of 20 different photographs. And at the end, she left all of the materials as a kind of a punctuation mark at the end of that process. I'm in the middle of rehanging some stuff, being locked up here for the past, whatever, six weeks. So things are moving around. This here is a Jonathan Syme painting which was uh, very generous, do generously donated by Jonathan to the Access um, Gallery auction last year. And next to that is a painting by Les Ramsey that I just got from Towards Gallery in Toronto recently. And here are four sculptures by Boris Rebetes, who is a Swiss artist based in Basel. They are maquettes for pavilions in a very large collection in Australia. This next piece is by a British artist called Tom Lovelace. It was acquired from Flowers Gallery a few years ago. It's a found object. Uh, Tom has a project of uh, acquiring these pieces of fabric from notice boards that are outside of operas, cinemas, public places where notices will get posted. And uh, these pieces of fabric fade to varying degrees depending on how what areas are covered by posters for what period of time and how much UV light gets onto the fabric. This next piece is a light box by A.A. A. Bronson. It's a collaboration with Ryan Brewer. Uh, here A.A. A. is uh, painted red and photographed standing on the trails in the pines, I believe, on Fire Island. Uh, particularly like it, it's such a strong image, a strong representation of culture in landscape. This next piece is a photograph by Scarlett Graft Hoflin. She is a Dutch artist based in Amsterdam. Her practice involves uh, backpacking to various parts of the world for sometimes long periods of time 
where she will find props and engage with uh, local people to make work using a 35 millimeter film. In this particular piece that's on an island near Vanuatu and the, the person in the photograph is uh, a descendant of the um, leader of that particular island at the time when um, James Cook landed uh, in the 18th century and he's holding a scale model of resolution which was Cook's ship at the time. This next piece is a, a painting by Peter Wilde who is a Canadian German artist uh, based in Berlin for the past 10-15 years. The painting is of someone unknown to Peter, but someone whose life he followed through Friends of Friends posting on Facebook. He was a young student who went to Europe and started traveling, and his life changed completely from being the sort of um, typical American tourist backpacking around to having this seemingly rather fabulous life of partying his way around Europe. This piece is a photograph by Vicky Alexander. It was acquired through Malice Bean the Printmakers a few years ago. It's an image that she made in Kew Gardens in West London of the tropical hothouse built to enable and control um, tropical plant life. Here are a couple of very small uh, sculptures from the possibly the 1970s from what's called the Resolute Bay School. Uh, Inuit carving produced specifically for trade. They're unattributed, but so delicately carved faces, these very chunky little bodies. Also in this uh, bathroom is a painting by Les Ramsey. It was painted in his uh, studio on uh, West Hastings back before he moved to Montreal, it's of more plant life inside of architecture. And there is another Les Ramsey painting of a uh, very controlled uh, nature. This was also acquired through Access Auction this past year. This piece is a sculpture by jean Vieve Dion a French-Canadian artist based in Vancouver, um, also acquired through Access Gallery. Uh, these are drawings done on ceramics and then assembled. Uh, I quite like the idea that it's a drawing and a sculpture and it references architecture, classical sculpture, and also functional ceramics. And it's kind of a pile of things. And it's below a piece by Alex Maruziu, who is a Romanian artist. That piece is based on the late writings of Iris Murdoch. They are corrections and scribblings in her journals during her, um, her, her later years when she was suffering from um, Alzheimer's. Finally, the last piece I'm going to show you is this video work by Robert Klein, acquired from Monica Reyes Gallery. It's a video, it's three minutes and seven seconds long, consisting of photographs of soap. He calls them involuntary sculptures. There's never been a time when a work has come into itself other than now when we're all completely obsessed with washing our hands. There is one more piece that I want to point out. It's an unfired clay sculpture that hangs on the wall. It's by a London-based German artist, Nicola Vermers. This particular piece is obviously one of those notices where there would be an image or text on top, and then there would be an email or a phone number, and you would tear off tabs if it interested you. So with the information taken away, it just becomes a sculptural object that still gives you the sensation that you should be taking it and you should be doing something.